Ladies and gentlemen, let me add my welcome to the conference. And uh, I'm sorry I can't be with you in person. I have a few minutes now of, uh, of thoughts for you uh, at the C government workshop about the things I think are most important for the next phase of e-government and the, the interaction of governments and uh, governments and people in, as intermediated by the World Wide Web. I'm going to talk about making data available, about openness. I'm also talk, talk a little bit about transparency in the sense of governments making it clear to people how they've arrived at data and using data appropriately. So. And um, there are some slides which are on the web. They may be in your handouts, and I'll go through them very rapidly. Is that if we uh, used all those slides, I would be able to talk to you for uh, 45 minutes, and we don't have a, enough time for that. So let me talk first about uh, openness. So why uh, openness of government? What does it mean? Well, the, uh, an important thing to remember when you're being open, firstly, I think government departments have an obligation to make data they, they have available to the public at large to the publics, uh, to, to NGOs, to other governments. So in, unless there are really good reasons for keeping that uh, information confidential, then it should be put out. And now we have standards for putting data on the web, just as we have standards for putting documents on the web. I think both documents and data should be put out there using the standards. Why standards? Well, it's fair to, only, to other readers. If you put them out in a proprietary format, then some people will be able to read and some won't. You're also forcing people to buy particular software, which I don't think is the role of government. But uh, also, very importantly, when you put things out using a standard, when you put information out there in HTML using a standard, when you put data out there in RDF, then you can be more sure that the archives will be readable by posterity. People studying from other countries and other times will be able to understand the information. So the idea of openness is to maximize reuse. I'd like to just reflect a little on what reuse of information means. If you think about the web, the value that the web adds to information is unexpected reuse. When something's put on the web, it may be put on because one person asks for it, but it's often reused by other people in ways unimagined by the person who first asked for the information. Similarly, when you're looking for things on the web, you find things which you never expected to find. That is the power. We do that at the moment with, document, with documents, and we should do it also with data. Who can reuse this? When you put information from your government department onto the web, then it may be reused by the public clearly, by your colleagues as well. It may be that there are people within the same department who actually haven't found access to your data otherwise. But also in other agencies, very importantly, we don't want government departments to be stovepipes of information. We want it to be used by people in other agencies, both in, uh, in your country and in other countries. Very often, you can only get a real view of what's happening in the world by combining data across many different sorts of application fields and many different countries. So it's also obviously uh, important for it to be there with, for companies that you do business with. For people that you award grants to, you should have a, be able to put out there the data about what grants are available, and so on. People that your, your partners up and down the supply chain in general. It's also important for research, because as you, for example, put out the, the daily situation of the unmended roads in your county or whatever it is, somebody somewhere else can be correlating the, how that changes with time with other factors and learning. So researchers are always interested in taking a different look at this data. It can be used also by the executive management, the very high level, mysterious level. When you want to make a decision, it's very important, sometimes in a hurry, that a minister has access to, can ask a question, which needs a view of data across perhaps many agencies to be able to answer that question. If the data has all been provided in a standard format, one can very rapidly perform that query and get the result back, produce a graph, whatever it is, which conveys the essence of the, of the situation quickly. Particularly interesting and important to think ahead about is data availability from in emergencies. When emergency occurs, you don't know, by definition, what information you're going to need. You don't want true, and the 
uh, planes flew into the Twin Towers. Nobody had had that problem before. They needed access to lots of different information to combine it together. It would be very much easier if all that information were available in standard form. So, if you like, it's the art of planning for the unexpected. It's very important when you do this that you do the, use the standards. And the current standards, the semantic web standards, which are RDF, OWL, and Sparkle, the query language, are different in a way, in a few fundamental technical ways. And I'll try and get across the essence of one of these, which impacts the way that government departments work together. For, in the past, before the semantic web standards, it was, you had to choose. If somebody was putting some information out there on, on the web or circulating it in some form, they had to choose whether to use an ISO standard, whether to use a national standard, whether to use a local standard that had been produced perhaps by a town or had been invented for a particular project. That is a difficult decision to make because ISO standards are very hard to make. They take a long time because you have to get a lot of people to agree and they only typically exist for a few concepts. Meanwhile, local standards, like uh, the terms for def defining different sorts of, say, holes in the road that need to be fixed, may only be defined by a local town, so they're not so reusable. The semantic web allows you to send data or to put data on the web using a mixture of terms. So when something involves a time or a date or the latitude and longitude or something, then you can use terms which will be recognized by software in many different applications across the world. When you use terms like the category of pothole in a road, then it may be something that is local only to a particular area. But when the, when the information about a particular change goes out, it will have mixed data. Some of the data, some of the details of the type of pothole may be only understandable by a local town. But some of the other things, like the, just the, the fact that the event happened in a particular time and a particular place, will be understandable by everybody. Anybody will be able to put them on a, on a map or on a time scale. In between, there are national standards. And, and so, in fact, it turns out that when you send data across the net, that data is sent by using a mixture. And the semantic web technology allows it to go out in a mixture of languages, if you like, as though every line in the form goes out and is written in a different language. Some language is very well known and some less well known. And that sort of magic about the semantic web technology allows you to get around that problem, if you like, of having to make one big choice as to whether you use a standard or not. It allows you to use a mixture and it, pu and it co puts a constant pressure on for the development of, of terms which are more widely shared. <coughs> 